Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, folks, we are back with you, fighting against the internet, fighting against YouTube all the way. That's right. We are no sound bites allowed, and we are here live with you on the Exceptional Conservative Network. That's right. And uh, as you may hear in the background, we're having a little bit of problems with the internet yet again. It's funny. The better we do, the more people pay attention, the more that's going on, the more that we're going to get feedback from, uh, uh, we get uh, more of a uh, pain from 
places like YouTube and the uh, overall major media. And we have problems with, of course, our favorite friends over at uh, Spectrum, Time Warner Cable. So we've got a lot that we're going to go over today. We've got some great news. We've got some good news. We've got some bad news that we're going to be talking about. News that you may not have heard a lot about, yet it's very important. Real critical information. And we are always, oh, it's always dropping out. I hate that. Uh, but what we always are looking to do is to make sure that we hear from you. So please send us a message over on Facebook at the Voss Political page. You can go over on Twitter and reach us at MV Consult and let us know something's going, your thoughts there. You can also reach us over on, uh, you can call into the show, 607 242 9247. We are here to hear your thoughts. That's why we spend two hours on Saturday speaking directly with you. And I don't know what's going on with my microphone because it's got like a little bit of feedback and I can't figure out where it's coming from. And we got some uh, background noise, so we're just going to make the best of it. And the computer is going crazy right now. So let me try and fix that. And I do want to mention that we do have our favorite, our intern, John the intern, is here with us. And he's checking out the chat room. He's going to keep an eye on that listening for everything that comes up. Uh, and we also have in the studio with us our good friend who's always here, but you never really see him. Uh, but he's always in the background here. And I want to show him to you in just one second. There he is. Nope, wrong one. There he is. There he is, Minion. That's right, one of our friends, Minion, is in the background. And oh, why are we having, we're having big problems right now. Give me one second, folks. I need to check. It, it's got to be something that's going on in the background in one of our... We've got so much stuff lined up for you that it looks like the... Oh, that's what it is. Stop. We've got things going on in backgrounds that are driving our computer crazy right now. And we're trying to limit this so that we can have a smooth program and talk with you. So we think we fixed it. So bear with us. It's That's the problem of trying to get you all the live information that you want to know about and hear. And yet, the technology is not necessarily working with us on it. So we're trying to get it as smooth for you as possible. It means we're probably also going to close out a couple of windows as we go. So, let's get to it. So the first thing I want to talk about and share with you, and this is a little bit better, and I saw, I apologize if anything is dropping out. We're trying to make sure that it's not doing that as much as possible. But uh, one of the first things that we want to talk about is YouTube. If you notice, we have been talking about YouTube a lot lately. YouTube is our Game of Thrones. Shame on you. Shame on Game of, uh, uh, Game of Thrones shame on YouTube for the censorship that they are putting out there. Wow, we have way too much going on. The background's just messing up. And you may have seen that we had put out a post talking about the censorship of YouTube, that YouTube uh, is fighting against creators. That they're making it almost impossible for people who are creators to bring you the content that you like. It doesn't matter whether it's a video game, whether it's uh, whether you like video games, whether you like entertainment, music videos, movie reviews, uh, details about movies or spoilers. Uh, I don't care what it is. Even if it's political commentary, you're not able to see all this. And why is that? Because YouTube has come out with a new set of rules that allows them to shadow ban, uh, essentially to hide content, to, de to deny you the ability to find things that you like and to promote what they approve of instead. So that's what you see. So when you see movies like uh, Star Wars Episode Eight, and people have legitimate questions about Star Wars, they're going to come out and they're going to put out whatever they want. And that's a problem because they're not going to tell you what's actually going on. And they're not going to let you hear the honest reviews. 
just like Disney was blocking it from people. That's what YouTube is looking to do. And YouTube came to us and they hit us. That's right. And a lot of people may remember we got hit in an attack by YouTube when we questioned them about what they did to Louder with Crowder, when we questioned them on what they did to uh, Tim Pool, when they've done to Ben Shapiro, where they're threatening, they're demonetizing sites, that they are uh, making access to those sites harder to find, to basically do what we saw done with Twitter, where even members of Congress were being hidden so that constituents couldn't see their tweets. Well, what we've done is we went and we fought this. We fought this. And thanks to you, we won. We beat YouTube. We beat the challenge that they put up against us. That's right. We came out and we said we were going to fight the copyright claim that they put out there as a warning to us saying, don't you dare keep talking. Don't you, keep, don't you dare keep making the argument. And we did make the argument. And we won the argument. And that's in part because we had you to thank. You went out there and you, whoa, what happened? Sorry, my page is not showing the right thing. Come on. Why is it doing that? Whoops. For some reason, my computer is acting up. And it's not showing what it should be showing. No. No, that's not right. Because we are fighting censorship. And I know we're fighting censorship. But it's supposed to be showing. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, it is showing it. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. I didn't even recognize my own screen. <laughs> I have it up here. Uh, but we had the YouTube article that was out uh, fighting the fighting censorship it was a video on YouTube uh, you saw it and it's been out there a relatively short period of time we're a small company we don't have all kinds of money we don't have all kinds of uh, ways to express ourselves the videos gotten 16 views in less than 24 hours but you know what we were able to give the fear of God back to YouTube and to let them know that we're not going to be silent. We are going to speak up for people's rights. And that was able to get us to win our battle uh, on their strike and to let them know that we're always going to continue to get this information out to you, that we're not going to stop, we're not going to be silent, and we're not going to give up without fighting because we believe in you. We believe in you. And that's the important thing. So uh, hopefully a lot of people will enjoy that. And I realize that um, some people may be having some difficulty seeing this at the moment because we're getting some trouble on the internet and being able to get this information out. So we apologize. We're going to try and fix that as we go and make this a little bit smoother for you. Um, so let's go into, and I think this is really important. To understand and to know that you can win against YouTube. We can fight censorship and we can win this. I don't care if the giants are YouTube, they're Google, they're Twitter, they're Facebook. They rely on customers, on us. They rely on our ability to use their platforms. And when they are dishonest with us, when they are putting out uh, the statement that they are neutral, when they come out and they say, that they don't uh, have an opinion and that they're, uh, they're willing to let any content on and then turn around and they take that content away because it's not approved when it's not the progressive message out there. When you come out and say things that are absolutely true, that are absolutely your opinion and they don't like it, well, then they block you. See, we can't allow that. If we let them get away with it once, we get, let them get away with it always. And then you will lose everything that you love. So we do ask people, go out there and like, share, comment, subscribe. Go ahead and let people know that you are interested in what's, what you're interested in. Let YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, let them know that you're still going to be checking out that content, whether or not they approve of it. Because you can, it is your right and your choice. 
And if they are truly neutral, then they don't get a right to say you can't. And that's the big thing. They can't tell you that they're neutral and then uh, uh, censor and, and shadow ban people. It's wrong. It's wrong. If they want to be private companies, which I'm all for, and they want to have their rules, which I'm okay with, then they need to stand by their rules and make those rules clear so that everyone is playing on the same play field that we all understand. And hopefully, we hope, if you're able, we have a target. We want to hit 4,000 subscribers. We want to have a video, 4,000 hits on the video. Go to our PSA video and just hit that, like it, 4,000 likes. That's what we're looking to hit. We want to hit 4,000 views on that video, 4,000 likes on that video, 4,000 subscribers on our PSA to fight shadow banning. That's what we're looking for. Not asking for a lot. We're not asking for money. We're not asking for anyone to do anything. I mean, if you want to make a donation, fantastic. We just want to hit 4,000 likes, 4,000 views on that video. And just to make the statement that even for small individuals like ourselves and anyone else that you like and that you check out or the next person who comes onto YouTube or onto Facebook or onto Twitter, that they have the ability to get their voice out and to make sure that they have a chance and that groups like Vox or NBC or ABC or Disney don't get to silence them and shut them out. And that's all we're asking for. And please make sure you also like and share all the things that you do love. That's the only way that these companies will understand that they can't just step on everyone. They can't. And we will not stand for that. So let's also go on to the, one of the next issues that I want to talk about. And this is really, it's really a very big deal. It's very important. Um, and and it's, it's, I don't even know how to explain how, how angry this makes me. Because it, it, it's infuriating. And I know that I was talking with intern John uh, just a few minutes ago about this because he didn't hear about this originally. And you may not have known that uh, about this. And that is, there's a candidate who's running for Congress and he's a pedophile. And this is insane, folks. This is insane. I mean, it, you can see the article came out on uh, Yahoo, which was on May 31st. And quite honestly, nobody really heard about it. No one was talking about it. It wasn't something that was out in the news. I don't know why not. But I just recently found it myself. And this is, and the title of the article is Congressional Candidate in Virginia Admits That He Is a Pedophile. That's Nathan Larson. He's 37 years old. He's in Charlotte, Virginia. He is a pedophile, self-admitted. Now, I want to be very clear about this. I want to be very clear. This guy, he said, Nathan Larson admitted when he was talking to the Huffington Post. So this isn't right-leaning. This isn't libertarian. Huffington Post, about as liberal as you get. He goes on there and he tells the Huffington Post that he is a pedophile. He is also, as we find out from some of uh, a little bit more research on this and following up on the story, as of June 4th, okay, June 4th, 2019, uh, this Virginia congressional candidate, he wants to legalize child marriage. He wants to uh, make it legal for incest. He is a white supremacist. That's Nathan, Nathan Larson. And this is from WK, WK, oh, excuse me, WKRN reporting this. I couldn't see it with my glasses there for a second. WKRN.com, and he's, this is their article from June 4th of 2018. The guy's still running again in 2018. This guy is self-admitted, and, well, let me go back. Uh, so this guy is he's insane that we've had this happen before. And here's my problem with this. Here's my big, big problem with this. And I know this is from 2018. A lot of people haven't paid attention to it. 
But what else we saw in 2018 and we see today is the fact that Governor Cuomo plans to restore voting rights to paroled felons. Okay? We know this because the New York Times reported it. And I want people to think about this for a second because it's an old story. No one really paid attention to it. It didn't go anywhere. But here's the thing. Where is our country going to? That admitted felons, admitted felons, uh, excuse me, not felons, uh, he's a, he is a felon, but uh, an admitted pedophile, an admitted self, a white supremacist, an admitted uh, person who wants to have, allow incest. This guy is like everything wrong in the world. And he's able to do this in our nation right now. This should be a joke. No one in the universe would vote for him. He shouldn't be able to run on that platform without instantly being removed. That, that people should instantly reject him. And more importantly, the fact is that he is a felon. And this is what New York State can expect when they, and we know that this is something that Governor Cuomo has been pushing, New York State has been pushing under this single party Democrat rule, is to be able to give voting rights, and you heard it from Bernie Sanders, and we've heard it from the 2020 candidates, that they want to focus on giving rights. They want Bernie Sanders is let the criminals vote, convicted felons, let them vote inside prisons. This is his words. Let's think about that for a second. We don't want to do it. Why in the world would we want to do that? To have convicted felons be able to vote. We're talking about giving, and and this is why I bring it up. And I know it's a 2018 article, but let's think about this. Mr. Larson here, Nathan Larson, is an example of what you get when you allow voting for, for felons. They gave up that right. There's a punishment there because when we have individuals, and maybe you can make an excuse or a, a, an exception for certain types of felons. Maybe that's, maybe that's a discussion. But that's not what we're seeing in New York State. That's not what we're seeing across the nation. That's not what we're hearing from Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Democrat socialists out there. They're not saying, well, some people get it, some people don't. No, no, they're saying cross the board. And that means you get people like this guy, Nathan Larson, who is one of the most vile candidates I have ever heard of in my life, who promotes some of the most vile ideas I have ever heard of in my life. And this is what we need to prevent. This is what we need to stop. Okay? When you see that... And the reason why he can do this is, and he can run, because he got his he got his rights back, his voting rights, his rights to run. They were given back to him by uh, Governor McAuliffe out of Virginia. He gave felons the right to vote. He gave felons the right to run again. And that's what New York Governor Cuomo is looking to do, to give them the right to run, to give them the right to go out there and promote incest, child marriage, white supremacy. These are horrible things. And this is what you get when you don't think through a law, you don't think of the consequences of the law, and you're trying to make political points based on gender and identity politics when you're going towards people and just looking for what's the most popular idea, what, what makes people who are... Uh, promoting the progressive socialist ideology. People like Citizen Action, uh, Indivisible New York, the progressive leaders of tomorrow, otherwise known as PLOT, Black Lives Matters. These are the people who are saying, no, 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 you should give, all felons should have the right to vote. Really? So they, they're they looking for guys like Nathan Lawson. They want him to be able to vote. They want a white supremacist who believes in child marriage and incest. They want that guy to to vote. They want that guy to run for Congress. This is what they're looking for. This is what they're supporting. This is what they're asking you to support. I tell you, I, I can't see that. 
I think it's wrong. I don't think there's anything positive about it. And I think there's, this is a clear example of why we don't want this. You know, when Bernie Sanders says, no, no, and, and he fights against the idea, yeah, you want to let, let race, rapists and, and killers to be able to vote. What do you think they're going to vote for? They're going to vote for the ability to commit the crimes that they committed and make them legal. They're going to support anybody who's going to allow them to do these vile acts and make it legal. Does that mean Governor Cuomo? Yeah, it means Governor Cuomo too. It means Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It means Bernie Sanders. They're going to support people who are allow them to commit crimes and not be punished for them. You know, where has our nation come? Where has our nation come when this is happening and it isn't headline news and the nation isn't saying, we can't do this? When Bernie Sanders is out there and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, when they're all out and they're saying, hey, we're going to promote this, this horrible, vile idea to allow these horrible, vile people to, to infect our nation. Now, I know those are strong words, but I have very strong feelings about this. And I think we all should. Because it's really, really distasteful. It's really a problem. And we really need to be unified as a nation in talking about this. And, and we need to stop this. We really need to stop this. It cannot be allowed. But I'm, I'm really fed up with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break. And, and get that taste out of my mouth because it's a horrible one. And then we're going to come back and we'll go forward with the show talking about something that's better. But I think we really need to understand when you're saying, when you're listening to these politicians give you this empty promise or this idea that they're selling to you, that you should be able to allow felons to, to vote. Individuals, horrible, vile individuals. Not, I'm not saying they're individually, any individual, any one person. Maybe some felons are good people. I'm not saying that they're all bad people. But I'm talking about people like Nathan Lawson. I'm talking about people who promote some of the worst ideas in the world. There's a reason why we punish people when they go to prison and say, you've committed a felony, you give up certain rights. And people who are pandering to get votes should not be able to just throw that away and say, well, it doesn't matter anymore because I need an extra vote of this particular group of people so that it can win that's not worth it we're, we're trading we're trying to trade for the social justice idea we're, we're trading our freedoms and we're trading our core values for what what are we getting in exchange really we're getting more people like nathan lawson i'm sorry that's not worth it that's never worth it but let me get this out of my mouth i, I, I want to let this go and we'll be back and we'll talk about we actually have quite a few things to talk about including the unemployment uh, we want to talk about alexandria ocasio cortez and her battle with the fbi the 2020 race and um, silencers and what's going on with the virginia beach shooting uh, we got a lot more to go so we'll be right back in a little bit <laughs>
Hello everyone, and back we are back again with No Sound Bites Allowed on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We're happy to be here with you every time, and we thank you for joining us because you guys make the difference. That's why we beat YouTube. That's why we're here advocating and defending all of the content that you see on YouTube, all of the content you see on podcasts, all of the content that comes across social media, um, all the people who are out there, not just us, but everyone. We're small. We're a small company. We don't get $200 million from Vox and NBC. We don't get millions of dollars. We barely get donations. We are here for you. We are here for the content to be able to have the conversation because we're Americans and we should be able to have that right, to be able to have a conversation, to be able to share information with each other. That is the important thing. That's what we're here for and we defend that. That is our First Amendment right and we believe in it and we're going to celebrate it. 
That's why we're happy to be on the Exceptional Conservative Network. That's why we're happy to be No Sound Bites Allowed. That is me, that is John the Intern, and of course, our very favorite friend who is always in the background with us, and that is Minion, who's there. And I know a lot of people don't see him too often, but actually, we don't usually show him, but we're going to do that a little bit more going forward. So, let's talk about what else is going on out here. Because there's a lot of issues that I think are important and we've talked about and we see that people just miss. Now, we've already talked about the fact that you can beat Facebook. We can defeat the effort of Facebook to shadow ban all the content that's out on the Internet right now. To take away all the things that you enjoy, whether it's uh, video games or uh, music videos or movie reviews or like us, political commentary, they're looking to shadow ban that and remove that. Well, guess what? We can take care of that. We can fight them against that. We did, as we showed earlier, we fought them on that, and we were able to win our challenge because of your attention and your impact. And we want to get to 4,000 likes, 4,000 hits on any video. I don't care which one. Pick one, and uh, including the promotion of the PSA, the public service announcement, saying that we should fight shadow banning. Please, let's get the 4,000 subscribers, 4,000 likes, and and support anyone else that you like so that we can get YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Google, get them all in line and remember that the First Amendment stands for something. We have a comment in the chat room. Mr. Exceptional One says, Amen, Mike. Oh, that's, uh, okay, you're... You're on with your mic now. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Exceptional One in the chat room currently says amen to that mic. Well, thank you. That, uh, is that the Exceptional One? Yep. That, that sounds like it might be Ken. He's one of our fans, and he comes and listens to the show on a regular basis. And Ken, thank you. Uh, we're going to try and always fight for these things. They're important. Uh, and we also were talking a little bit about something else that really disgusted me, the fact that In America, we've come to the point where pedophiles are able to run for Congress because we have politicians like Governor Northam, like Governor Andrew Cuomo, who have gone out of their way to make sure that these pedophiles uh, have the right to vote, that they're able to get back into the community and to inject their horrendous ideas. And when I'm talking about this, I'm speaking about Nathan Lawson, who believes he's a white supremacist by his own admission. He is a white supremacist. He believes in incest. He believes in child marriage. This is something we should not allow. And when we hear these politicians like Bernie Sanders who say that we should allow for uh, the the felons, convicted felons in prison to be able to vote, that this is what we're talking about. This is what we're going to give voice to. This is what we're going to promote in our nation is individuals like this coming out and saying, hey, the very worst of crimes, the very worst of elements, we're going to promote that in our country. And I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid of our country. And I hate, and this is one of the reasons why we hate when we hear Governor Cuomo come out and say, hey, yeah, he wants to get the felons to vote. When we hear Bernie Sanders looking to promote himself on the 2020 presidential race, and suddenly he's going around and saying, uh, that, that felons should be able to vote and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the entire uh, democratic socialist left they, they scare me but I said I wanted to get into happier thoughts or at least different thoughts anyway <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing with um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics the unemployment numbers came out a lot of people may have just seen that and One of the things I always like to focus on, and I know nobody pays attention to this stuff, it's always the stuff that is out of uh, of the attention. The biggest thing that you could possibly look at, in my personal opinion, is looking at the unemployed, uh, excuse me, the part-time work. Part-time work. How many people are working part-time? Well, what we can see is that the part-time numbers are down. There are less people who are working part-time. That means our economy is doing well. The other big thing that you have to look at is the self-employment. 
And I know no one talks about these numbers. No one explains this stuff. And I'm going to explain it in just a second. But the self-employed, the number of small businesses, which everyone agrees is the engine of growth in the country. This is why our country is doing well. This is why the unemployment rate is 3.6%. Because of small businesses, mom and pops, you and me. And that's at 8,700,000. That is up versus last month. That is slightly down from last year. So what does that mean? What do we know that makes? What, what does that mean for you and me? It means that the country is pretty much at full employment, that we're not going much further, that this is about as good as it gets. Well, you know, 3.6 unemployment, that is about as good as it gets. You can't really ask for much more than that. So when we see that the unemployment numbers are, or the number of people, new jobs, what do, they, what do you expect? It's not going to be breakout stellar numbers every single month. Everyone who, ha who wants a job pretty much has a job. We have more jobs out there than, most, uh, than there are people to fill them for the most part. Uh, I believe it's a million more jobs available than there are people to fill them. We have full employment. So we can't say that the economy is going to do badly just because uh, the number of new jobs didn't go down. What we're looking at is realistically, we know there are less people who are forced to work part time. We know that we're, we're pretty much at the max in terms of the uh, self-employed. The engine is working. We need to just keep going the course. And people say to me, well, Mike, how can you be sure of that? I mean, what's the thing that's going to give you that absolute fact? And I want people to really understand what's going on here. The big thing is how many people are not in the labor force? How many people are not counted? This is the number of people who they're not getting unemployment. They don't get unemployment, so they're not part of the unemployment number, but they aren't working either. And that number is 96 million people, 96 point, uh, 96 million, 215,000 Americans. Sounds like a huge number. It is a huge number. But more importantly, that number is actually about flat. It's almost even with where we were a year ago. Now, if you're saying to yourself, well, Mike, that, seems, that still seems like it's an incredibly large number. It's huge. Keep in mind, under President Obama, we added over 15 million people who did not work and do not count towards the unemployment rate. And under President Bush, excuse me, under President Trump, that number has increased by about 1.5 million. So we're flat, essentially. We have essentially no more people who are unable to work, who are not working, who don't, who don't get unemployment, but don't count. There's your difference. President Obama had, on average, about 1.8 million people, almost 2 million people per year that he was in office that were unemployed and did not count towards the unemployment rate, the real unemployment rate, which is usually double the announced unemployment rate, which is called the U6. And it's normally about double. And we're not seeing that here. What we are seeing is real growth. Are we going to see it be gangbusters as we've seen for the last 18 months? Probably not. But let's look at this realistically. It's not possible. You're not, that's not even something we would normally expect to see. I think it, and you can talk to Mr. Exceptional, who's in the chat room. You can talk to him down in, uh, and he's down in the Maryland, D.C. area. An area that always has employment because everyone works for the government and or is trying to get the government to pay them. And I bet he would even tell you that when he looks around, there's only so many jobs. We, we are maxed out. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Our economy is actually in a great place. But you can listen to Joe Biden. You could listen to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You could listen to uh, Cory Booker or Bernie Sanders or actually any of the Democratic 2020 candidates. And you can ask them, gee, how's our economy doing? And they're going to tell you it's horrible. 
which is incredible. We have 3.6% unemployment, and they're going to say it's horrible. The, the, the economy is about to crash. Remember, they said the same thing in 2016. They said it in 2017. They said it in 2018. They have been promising us that the economy is going to crash at any moment, that absolutely everything is going to fail because President Trump is in charge. And they are looking forward to it. Remember, it was Bill Maher who came out and said that we need to have a recession. Bill Maher was out there saying, Democrats, they're cheering on the government failing. They want unemployment to go up. They want the government to fail. They want you to fail. They want you to lose your job. They want the business owner, the small business owner, to lose their job. And by the way, YouTube is helping them with that, with its shadow bans and demonetization. It wants to get rid of those businesses. It wants to hide them. It wants to hurt them. This is what happens, and they're all connected. When you take away someone's First Amendment right, you take away a lot of people's ability to work. When you, when you demonetize them, when you're punishing them for having a voice that isn't approved, by some corporation or by the government, then all of a sudden you take away the ability of someone to be able to make money, to exchange ideas. It affects everything. There is no separation. This, the economy is not separate of us being able to speak, is not separate of us being able to be on social media. They're all interconnected because this is about our lives. This is about our core values. And people too often forget that. That if you affect one of them, you're going to affect everything else. If you, can't ha if you don't have a job, if your business is forced to close because YouTube demonetized you and hid you so people couldn't find your content, even though they liked it, even though people, you could have, like Steven Crowder, a million people, he's number 2,000 out of 50 million YouTube channels, millions of people who support him, and YouTube goes out and takes away his monetization, which is worth between eighty dollars and $150,000 a year. And they take that away for all of his employees. And he's no longer able to pay to keep his lights on, to pay his employees. And he goes out of business. And then he doesn't have, when he goes out of business, he doesn't have the right and the ability to express his First, uh, his first Amendment rights. His employees lose the ability to have their First Amendment rights because now they're out of work. Maybe they can't afford, like you and I or other people we know, can't afford to pay their cable bill. They can't afford to have their cell phones and to be able to be on the Internet and to use that data, uh, that data limit to be able to see things on the Internet. And so they lose their ability to speak. And now they're disenfranchised. This is how the process works. This is why it's a problem. This is why we have to fight shadow banning. This is why we have to fight YouTube and the censorship and Facebook with its censorship and Twitter with its censorship that they have all admitted. They have all been in front of the Senate and admitted that they are actually censoring people. Because when the economy is doing well, no one really pays attention. But when they force the economy into a bad place, which they want. We have heard them say it. Bill Maher has said it out very clearly that they want to see a recession. They have been promising that there's going to be a recession. They are fighting tooth and nail against everything that President Trump has done. They keep telling you, if we have a tariff, it's going to destroy the economy. Yeah, we had a tariff, and what happened over this weekend? President Trump said that he was going to put tariffs on Mexico. Mexico came to the United States and negotiated a deal. They're working with us to help us to prevent uh, more illegal immigration, to better make the trading environment more of an even and fair market. And that helps our economy. The exact opposite of what you're being promised you're being told that we're going to go into a tailspin. The economy's doing well. And no, no, it's, it's really a recession. You just don't realize it. Okay, your lying eyes, knowing that you're making more money, to know that the economy is doing well, to see that the playing field is made level. None of that is true. No, no, no. 
Because the same people who want you to be unemployed, that want you to be in a recession, that want you to lose your home, the ability to express yourself with the First Amendment by getting onto social media, those people who are doing everything to hurt you are telling you that, well, no, they're smarter and they know that things are in bad, they're in bad shape and that you're actually being hurt. That's ridiculous. I mean, when you think about it, when you really think about it, that's what's going on. That's what's being said. And no one talks about it. I know. because Why? Because, well, when you look at the numbers like this, and everyone's looking at it like, oh my God, there's so many numbers. Oh my God, there's just too much numbers. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's too many numbers, and you have to do math, and it feels horrible. And guess what? You think you're going to be like Minion here. And it's just like, oh, he's, it's beyond us. You can't do it. can't do it. And the second that you say you can't do it and you give up, that's the second that they take advantage and you start losing. That's the second that you start seeing governors giving voting rights back to convicted felons. And we see those convicted felons like Governor Northam is done. Like, uh, actually, it was Governor Olif that did it. And then suddenly we have convicted felons who are in favor of incest and child marriage and pedophilia, admittedly, self-admittedly in favor of these things that they're running for Congress. I tell you, I don't like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I think she's an absolute idiot. But I would, I'd rather have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in Congress than I would to see uh, Nathan Lawson, a pedophile, a, a rapist, by his own words, there's no, there's no comparison here. There is no comparison. But at the same time, we shouldn't have either. We should be able to have enough ideas and be able to speak enough that we don't need to make the choice to say, do I want a pedophile or do I want a democratic socialist? How about we don't have either and we get a real choice? Who isn't out there trying to destroy the economy so that they can make a political point, so that they can maintain political power? How about we don't have to make the choice between those two so that we don't have to fight against uh, social media giants like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and that we're able to exchange our ideas without them trying to demonetize us or to put our voices inside a rabbit hole so that no one can possibly hear it because they don't like what you're saying, because they like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, because they like having power over you and your choices. I tell you, that's that's troubling to me. It's upsetting to me. It makes me angry. But okay, we we've gone through that. And we have a comment in the chat room. Oh, of course, Mister Exceptional. The uncontrolled economy is the demise of the tyrant. Say it again. The uncontrolled economy is the demise of the tyrant. Yes, yes, that is absolutely true, and I think it's a, it's an important thing to think about that. The more freedom we have if with our money, if we can spend our money better than the government ever can. And if you think the government spends money than any of us, look at any, look at the ledgers. Name, how many states are in debt? New York State has how much debt? $181 billion. That increased by $3 billion just this year, as announced on March, uh, March 2019 by Governor Cuomo. And then he increased more taxes to drive out more people. Yeah, he's a brilliant guy. Uh, what about looking at the government? And yeah, what's the national debt? $22 trillion. What was it the day before President Obama got in office? $9 trillion. What was it at the day that President uh, Obama got out of office? $21 trillion. It's currently $22 trillion. None of them are doing the right thing. I have a problem with every single one of those people, whether it's Bush or Obama or Trump, and let's go back and back and back. Yeah, we have a federal deficit, $22 trillion. I will blame Republicans as well as I will uh, Democrats, and more importantly, I blame the public because we let them get away with this. And the more debt we have, the less freedom we have because the more they're going to punish us. And they do this so that you don't have a free choice. Oh, you know, you don't have the money to choose. You don't have the money to choose whether you want to be on Facebook or if there's a competitor because you can't open up the business to compete with them because they took away your money. And that's the problem. 
And that's the problem. Because you can't afford to have the internet to be able to get out there and to tell people about the choices they have, to tell them about what's really happening. Because someone has taken away your voice, has taken away your money and your ability to speak. No, I don't agree with that at all. Call me a libertarian on that type of stuff, but I believe that people should speak always. As I've said many times before, I am a near absolutist on the ability to have free speech. I'm a near absolutist on the right to have the Second Amendment. And I think those are important things because when we do that, we have more freedom, not less. And that's always true. Was that a comment again? Um, no. Oh, I thought I heard something. No. Nope. Okay, then we're going to take a quick break and I'm ever so happy. I'm always happy to hear everyone who's uh, commenting with us. And remember, you can call in at 607-242-9247. You're also able to reach us on Twitter at MV Consult. You are able to reach us on Facebook at the Voss Political, uh, the Voss Political page. And, of course, uh, we're looking for all of your comments in our chat room as well. And we'll be right back in just another moment with our second hour speaking with you about the issues that really matter. 